Ich habe heute übrigens von Race Beyond Matter ein Video reingespielt gekriegt. Und das heißt, The Hidden Problem You Should Know About Sim Pedals. Und das hat mich getriggert, das zu gucken. Okay, schauen wir mal rein. Was ist denn das Hidden Problem? Lots of pedals, we used to say, are the most important upgrade in our sim racing journey, particularly for the brake pedal and the way it works, which helps creating that famous muscle memory to hit our braking points consistently. Hat er sich jetzt da oben ein Dings hingebaut? Weil ja, dieses Cockpit ist einfach insane, Alter. Ooh. But there is a hidden problem no one ever discussed publicly, which I'm trying to fully understand for more than a year, testing dozens of different pedal sets here on my cockpit. And it turns out every sim pedal producer is aware of this issue and quietly try to deal with it and solve or at least minimize that problem. Okay. I also found pro teams and drivers are aware of that and have found their own solutions without sharing that publicly, which is understandable as for them any advantage against the competition is very welcome. So it's time to discuss this publicly and try to help you with some solution. Also, we may push the industry to give more attention to that and even push them in different direction. Let's break the myth. Okay, das ist jetzt aber ein richtiger Ballsy Claim. Was kommt da jetzt? First, for those who are not fully aware how muscle memory works, basically, when a movement is repeated over time, the brain creates long-term muscle memory for that task and eventually allowing it to be performed with little to no conscious effort. The advantage of that is the decreased need of attention executing that movement but with maximum efficiency within our motor memory system. In sim racing, with the lack of g-forces and with most of the pedals lack of any feedback, we fully rely on that muscle memory we built with practice and that is the reason the industry use lot cell units in their pedals which are very precise in their capability to measure the exact pressure we apply to the pedal plate which usually push or pull the load cell through piston with set of elastomers or springs which determine how the pedal feels in compression for us. All that is really great concept and serve us for ages in our sim racing journey but there is one big issue with the pedals which use elastomers compression resistance. The elastomers are rubber compound with different properties. Some are hard, some soft but testing so many of those over the years they all have The same problem. <laughs> wow. Das sind viele. To fully understand what I'm talking about, we'll read this straight from the article, which you can find in the description below. So, here are the main challenges of the rubber behavior. There are three district categories of the stress, strain behavior of the elastomer, which makes engineering design so challenging with that material. First, Cyclic property changes. Second, large deformation response. And third, non-linearity of stress strain curve. In our case, for sim racing use, the third one becomes the huge problem and no one ever brings that to the table. That Is this a GoPro? Wie krass sind der GoPros mittlerweile? The fuck? This is the stress relaxation. In this picture, there are two successive extensions last retraction cycles taken to the same maximum stroke. The decrease in measured stress of the second cycle is due to the stress relaxation and that is defined as decrease in stress with time at constant deformation. In rubber, stress relaxation occurs due to the slipping of entanglements losing the <coughs> network of molecular chains so they apply less force. Now, Having that basic understanding of how elastomers work due to their molecular structure, let's see how that translates to a sim racing pedal with precise load cell measure. If you are an experienced driver, you know most of the cars. Ich muss das jetzt ganz kurz mal fragen. Ist das nicht Allgemeinwissen? 
in different circumstances, can't handle 100% pressure and locked tires which not only extend the travel of the car but also overheat the tires and can create flat spots in some scenes. Let's say the tire grip can handle for 2 seconds 80% brake pressure before we start trail braking and turn into the corner. Well, here is the problem of that elastomer relaxation. We hit 80%, which is the maximum the grip can handle initially, but the slipping of entanglement, losing the network of the molecular chain, relaxing the initial pressure on the load cell with sometimes more than 10%, and we end up breaking in the next second and a half with 70 or even less instead of 80, which the grip can easily handle. The end result is we have indeed created perfect muscle memory to hit the exact initial pressure on the pedal for each corner being sometimes 80 or 85 or 90 percent and then out of our control the elastomer relax and we end up breaking with 10-12 percent less force and letting lots of time on each braking zone. When I first discovered this on set of pedals I was testing before, I was thinking we have filthy load cell and ask for another unit. When I replaced the load cell and nothing changed in that pedal behavior, I started looking in wrong directions for problems with my USB slots or electromagnetic interference till one day I I decided to test springs I had around from other pedals and once I replaced the elastomer with those springs the load cell calmed down and become quite precise. Once I explained the manufacturer this problem and asked him to develop spring set for the piston he was a bit skeptical but two weeks later report three tenths to half second improvements on his times with the new springs kit. In the next year I've heard similar reports from people who replace their elastomers with springs. Ja, die sollten halt. Hä? Man sollte halt einfach keine, äh, keine Lasto mehr benutzen, wenn man. So, I start diving deeper in that problem and try to fully understand what's the difference between springs and elastomers compression behavior, and that's how I discover that molecular structure of the rubber and relaxing behavior under constant pressure. That being said, springs are not perfect too, but at least way more stable. Now, I'm not engineer, but somehow my brain find a way to solve different problems. And at the time I discovered the issue and found solution, I start contacting different pedal manufacturer. And for my surprise, most of them were fully aware and quietly trying to solve the problem and find the way to bring the most accurate measurement using that rubber compound, which as we can see is not optimal at all for this use. My personal guess is also cost efficiency as that is way cheaper. Some companies minimize that effect using specifically designed spacers or cups containers, even mixing springs with elastomers. Another difference between springs and elastomers is the compression property. Springs are mostly linear and elastomers are more on the progressive side. That means elastomers will... Na, die Asitec pedale sind ja, äh, also beispielsweise die Asitec haben auch Elastomer drin, aber ich fahre jetzt seit zwei Jahren und merke keinen Unterschied auf der Bremse. Also der ist, irgendwann ist er weicher geworden, ja, irgendwann logischerweise gibt Elastomer her, ändert aber nichts daran, dass die bei, bei Dings hier, bei, ähm, bei Asitec trittst du einfach gegen eine Wand. Also du trittst immer noch mit deinem Bein die, die Stärke. Also du musst immer noch die Stärke treten und nicht den, den Weg. Or give a bit more realistic feeling to the brake and can give a lot of options to the manufacturer to create different settings and different compression curves, which will help their selling point. But at what cost? No one have ever explained. As you can see, I don't mention any specific names as all manufacturers have to deal with this problem, but no one have ever mentioned that publicly because that myth of famous muscle memory and load cell measurement is such a convenient selling point and we are all responsible for 
that meat anyway. The damage is done and we are all responsible for that, so here I have few solutions for you. First, if you're on pedal elastomers and you have different in hardness options, test them all and check which set of rubber is the most stable with less relaxation. Open your pedal set software or DVU program and hit your pedal with 80% pressure. Keep it there and check on what percentage the pressure will fall down in the next few seconds. Repeat that with all different rubber you have and use just the best one. Next option is to look for aftermarket springs for your model and if you can't find but your elastomer problem is severe, find other people with the same pedals. Ich würde euch generell immer Federn empfehlen. Also wenn ihr, ich würde immer auf Federn zurückgreifen. Explain the issue and try to push the company to make a set of springs for that model. As much more noise we make about that problem, that much more the companies will realize we are aware. I know Elastomers feels a bit better in use, but at cost of breaking performance and we need full control. Another solution I found in the last pedals I use is angle measurement. In those, I have the choice between load cell and angle and I found my inputs to be way more precise translated to the sim with the house sensor than the load cell with the same muscle memory I have created using elastomers. I know many people got confused with that statement, but you have to understand that simple thing. The work of my feet doesn't change at all and I still press the pedal with the same feeling and amount of pressure through my muscle memory. When load cell measure my input is over the place because the elastomer molecular matrix is relaxing after the initial push, but when I use the angle sensor, I feel exactly the same way, but the game input is absolutely stable. I have to understand, load cell or angle sensor have nothing to do with the muscle memory we have built. That memory is built on the compression of the moving parts in this case rubber or springs and as long as the pedal moves the angle sensor will be absolutely precise. The main difference between those two is the linear measurement on the house sensor even if the pedal feels progressively stiffer and the progressive measurement of the load cell with the progressive stiffness of the pedal through that movement. Ich finde es wirklich sehr <coughs> beeindruckend, wie er über die letzten Jahre sein ganzes Wissen und das Rumbauen, was er macht, immer mehr teilt. However, in both cases, we will build that muscle memory we need and subconsciously execute that movement precisely. Just one of the inputs will be translated to the sim as super stable and the other will relax out of our control. I hope you understood the unspoken problem we have for so many years and find a way to minimize it with at least the best available elastomer set you have in your kit or find some good spring set and have full control of your braking inputs and eventually improve your times. Das habe ich äh, schon selber ähm, kennenlernen dürfen, als ich die Häusigen Welt gefahren bin, die Sprint. Äh, ab dem Punkt äh, wollte ich auch nie wieder Elastomerbremsen fahren. Also dauerhaft in meinem Main Rig möchte ich keine Elastomerbremsen fahren. Hm. Gut. Elastomere sind halt, also sie sind halt, wie sie sind. Deswegen mag ich beispielsweise die VRS-Pedale so, weil die haben das nicht. Die haben Federn drin. <lacht> das ist eine der schönsten Sachen an der VRS-Pedale. Weswegen die wahrscheinlich auch so populär ist. Weil die waren, glaube ich, mit die ersten, die nur Federn verbaut haben und keine Elastomer. Wenn du wirklich viel fährst, ist der Elastomer ein richtiger Killer. Sind deine Asitec mit Federn? Ne, da ist ein äh, hydraulischer Zylinder. Und hinten drin ist ein Elastomer, das ist ungefähr so groß, aber das macht da nicht wirklich einen großen Unterschied, weil du bei den VRS immer in die Wand reintrittst. Also du trittst immer gegen ein festes Stück, da ist irgendwann Feierabend. Ja, die <lacht> Gummis geben immer nach, Leute. Das ist, ähm, also wie gesagt, wenn ihr die Möglichkeit habt, Elastomer wegzupacken, würde ich euch immer empfehlen, Elastomer wegzupacken. Ich fühle mich immer ein bisschen schwer mit ihr, lasst zu mehr. Da bin ich immer so ein bisschen skeptisch. Es ist so... I don't know.